About a year ago, you probably heard about undetectable hacks on console which use machine learning, computer vision, and AI. And uh, uh, a lot of the reporting around this was just throwing buzzwords around. Machine learning is a subfield under artificial intelligence. Computer vision is a subfield under machine learning. It's not Skynet like a lot of articles make it seem. We'll break down computer vision, but first, the general idea behind the cheating setup was a console is connected to a capture card. That capture card sends a video signal to a PC that's running the program that uses computer vision. The program classifies objects on screens as enemies or not enemies, then does the math on the vector between the crosshair and the enemy. That data is then sent to a scripting device that can emulate a control the data is translated to controller input and your aim on console moves to the enemy. It wasn't walls, it didn't modify the console or use homebrew firmware to load code that would allow you to read data from the game's memory like you can on PC. Now, the thing about computer vision is that it's only as good as the model you use and the quality of data you use to train the model. Under the hood, it's all math. Misclassification of objects is pretty common even when CV is implemented well. Not to mention, every game that this could be implemented in is different. Games like Valorant have outlines around enemies, maps with little clutter, compared to Warzone where it's more difficult to see an enemy. There's objects like birds flying around. Effectiveness differs on the complexity of the frame being examined. It's not exactly plug and play or the first page of Google 30 second purchase 5 minute setup that all these skids on Warzone use. Now in the case of user vision, implementation at the time wasn't the best. Even against bots and hardcore on Cold War where it's easier to see enemies. Object detection seemed a little finicky. Overall, it seemed pretty crude. They got a cease and desist and ceased development, but it was only a matter of time before someone else came along. Now, I'm not going to say the name of this product because that would only drive traffic to them. This product popped up about a year ago, doing simple things like anti-recoil. But as time has gone on and they added more macro device type features, they of course implemented computer vision aim assist. It's the same idea as the user vision product I spoke about earlier, but further along in its development process. They're also working with another developer that's working on a similar project. They have different object detection models for different games, from gameplay taken from their Discord and testimonials, it seems more refined and more accurate. Now, just like user vision, there's a pretty high barrier to entry. Other than a console or PC, you'll need a controller scripting device, a capture card, and another beefy PC as working with object detection at a high frame rate can be computationally intensive. And then you have to account for the subscription of said software. It adds up. Most people don't have the money or time to deal with setting something up like this and would rather cheat with typical software-based cheats that are more reliable or have more features. <laughs> They only have 500 members in their Discord, and out of those, about 100 are actually sub. So I wouldn't expect to see these users in your lobby. But here's what really worries me. They're working on lowering that barrier to entry, with Arduinos replacing the controller scripting device to allow for mouse and keyboard support, and with plans for their own device made for their specific product in the future. They're also looking at letting all this run on a single PC for PC players. Although that would increase the number of detection vectors, making detection easier, and good luck having a decent frame rate as computer vision on its own is already computationally intensive, so running it at the same time as a game as unoptimized as COD would be a pit poor experience. But they've also done something which really ticked me off. They're using the disabled community as a front, publicly saying this is meant for those with disabilities while in their discord it's quite obvious what's really going on. Because if their intentions were true, one mention of this project gaining notoriety wouldn't have led to the discord getting locked down, would it? Think about it. If they wanted to help people, shout it from the rooftops, let the project be known. Only reason to try and keep it obscure would be if you know your project breaks TOS for multiple games, especially if you know it's being used maliciously. You hide it if you're afraid of a cease and desist. But wait! Now it's not all doom and gloom. I've talked about the pitfalls of computer vision, I've talked about the barriers to entry, but all that is moot without solutions. Like how do you prevent this? If that fails, how do you detect this? What can be done? So I talked to friend of the channel, Nebby. I can talk about the pitfalls of computer vision, um, things like object misclassification when things on the screen get a little bit more yeah. complex. Mm -hmm. But people love, on the internet, love listening to skids, script kiddies who don't exactly know what they're talking about. Like, like these guys bought a $20 cheat and think they're experts on the problem space now. Um, and it, it's 
mainly because we don't get to hear from people who actually work behind the scenes on anti-cheat systems that people who, you know, who just buy cheats are able to have like a pretty big platform to just kind of talk about them without actually understanding what makes, you know, the, the intricacies. Right. So what is your opinion? It's a pretty open ended question, but what is your opinion on computer vision cheats? My opinion, that's a good question. So, uh, you know, in general, I think computer vision cheats have gotten better throughout these years. Uh, you know, at first they were just simple pixel reading like aim bots that tried to like identify outlines, like enemy outlines. They can see that it's in a different color. And then the screen reading aim bot just checks for that pixel color and then adjusts the aim. But the software all runs locally on that machine, right? So detecting it wasn't harder than any other traditional cheat because the software was still running on the end user's machine. Uh, I would say uh, computer vision in general typically is not as good as a memory-based cheat, like one that's actually reading the game state directly from the game client, finding where the objects are, finding where the players are, you know, adjusting aim appropriately using engine functions or engine data structures. That's usually more lethal and more accurate than something that's running externally outside of the machine or trying to you know, mess with input. Uh, through through the software layer, not like directly on the game engine. So uh, in general, basically, the TLDR is, they're usually not as good, but they're getting better and better by the day. And the initial implementations of them were pretty novel. Like they weren't really crazy, right? They were very simple to uh, detect, but the, the more sophistic sophisticated threats are popping up. Yeah, so like, for example, the way it's used for console um, is that it's, it's running on a separate machine altogether. It's using yeah. a capture card, sending the video signal over to the second PC, and it works that way, right? And a lot of people see this as the end of legitimate play, and that would be true if left unchecked. So with that in mind, what are some checks that I guess anti-cheat teams can implement? You know, like, because a big part of computer vision setup is, mm -hmm. like I mentioned, having that input emulation device right like a titan 2 or like a you can even use like an arduino for example i imagine closing down systems and tighter restrictions for things like controller licenses yeah. maybe especially on the console side i i imagine that would go a long way but what are just some solutions that you can think of off the top of your head okay so to detect these like more external cheats that are harder to run not running on the system or yeah you know on the actual console itself in this case i i think uh you know a lot of these devices have to talk to one another. They're usually some networking component. Uh, I think like, you know, just checking traffic on the wire on, on the network may, may be useful for anti-cheats, but looking at it a little bit farther back, um, you know, trying to identify what type of input device is registered is usually useful. Like, hey, is this masquerading as an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller? Mm -hmm. Is it actually an Arduino, right, behind the scenes? Maybe try sending some commands that, you know, Arduinos only speak that a normal Xbox controller wouldn't. Uh, trying to interface directly with those uh, input devices. Again, uh, you know, because you're restricted as an anti-cheat uh, developer or a game developer on a console, you don't necessarily have the ability to do that. You kind of expect, uh, you know, Microsoft or Sony or Nintendo, whoever makes the consoles, have like good security there for, for those controllers, right? Uh, and then also, uh, I think things help by avoiding certain design decisions as well. Like uh, specifically, you know, you don't want to have obvious enemy outlines or obvious enemy models that make it super easy for computer vision to just like track and attack, right? Like, oh, this, this model is only for the enemy player and it's got this like really red outline. That makes it easy for computer vision cheats. You want them to not be as accurate, so you, you, you ideally want enemies to not be uh, as obvious, right? At least not programmatically. You know, obviously server-side detection plays a big role. Any any sort of like data collection you do on your back end for tracking hits, uh, you know, looking at view angles, player view angles to determine how their aim is moving, that, that helps tremendously too. Their lethality, their accuracy, as well, tracking all their stats and then making like machine learning, AI, or even basic sanity checks to, to ensure that, you know, these people are doing things that are unhuman, right? Mm -hmm. All of those go a long way. So there's a lot of different things you can 
kind of go after, you can try to go after the input device, you can try to go after, uh, you know, the, the data on the back end. There, there is hard work features coming out from, you know, manufacturers to, for DRM purposes, as we talked before a long time ago in our previous meet, to make these things a little bit harder so you can't just have an external capture card steal frames because the frames will be encrypted, right? And only the console and that TV that can speak that DRM spec can use it, right? Yeah, that's actually interesting. I actually forgot about DRM um, stuff like, you know, if you try to use a capture card with your PS5 and you try yeah. to boot up Netflix, it won't actually work. You have to turn on a setting and then the capture card doesn't work anymore, but now you can use Netflix. So actually completely, that actually completely skipped my mind that that would be something they could implement with a lot of other games. And then I guess the last question that I just kind of thought of, uh, for this video, there's this one program in particular that kind of spurred this video. That user base is pretty small. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of these CV cheats, the user bases tend to be pretty small, so it's not always the biggest, most pressing issue for anti-cheat teams. Do you see this issue, and it's hard to, you know, figure out the future, it's hard to predict the future, but do you see this issue becoming worse before there's any movement on it or before things become better? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to get substantially worse. Obviously, these things are important from, you know, just a console security perspective that need to be addressed. I mean, you look at console security specifically, it's, it's already pretty advanced compared to what we have on the PC. So things are locked down there. And I think this, this wasn't really something that was super considered. At, at the time, or it wasn't as high of a priority, but now if you know, people, more and more people are starting to abuse these systems, they're just gonna lock things down. Like, they're gonna do the encrypted DRM channels like they do for Netflix streaming, as you said, for games. Uh, then you, you won't be able to use that man in the middle capture card. You're gonna have to use like some external webcam that's like, that's like targeting your monitor, and then you have to exactly. deal with like light reflection in the room, and like and that messes you, with CV yeah, the yeah, accuracy. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just, it just makes things so much, much, much worse. And then obviously, you know, uh, I think the input controllers, as you alluded to, that's going to be a very important thing that they're going to want to tackle as well. Like they're going to want mm -hmm. to probably restrict that so only approved devices can, you know, interact with the input stack on an Xbox. And, uh, or a PlayStation, right? And mm -hmm. they'll find some ways to avoid devices from masquerading as legitimate ones. You know, there's. I don't think it's completely hopeless. I don't want to say people blow this out of proportion, but there's. it's not as hopeless as people make it seem. Would oh, you no. agree? Like A hundred percent, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of impressive that cheating has like sort of gone towards that arena right like mm -hmm. what what that means is like these barriers that developers have put up have been pretty effective right especially on the console right because you know a as a cheat developer they think about it from their perspective they want something that's so easy that anyone can just click on and download online and then they can sell their product to as many people as possible the lowest barrier to entry because they just want to make money right mm -hmm. but now when they have to start buying specialized hardware to cheat that already or they have to produce their own hardware yeah that already cuts down on their potential market and that sucks for a cheat developer like they would prefer not to do any of this stuff i assume uh, unless uh, they want to not make money right so uh you know the fact that we're already at this arena where people are starting to have to purchase specialized hardware uh, you know, these things are, cost a lot of money that they have to be acquired through like random Alibaba, AliExpress vendors. And it takes like months to get there unless it's seized at customs and all of that. Uh, so yeah, it, it's definitely complicated now to be a cheater. And I think that's a good world to be in. Like cheating is probably in the best state it's ever been. Like anti-cheat has been in the, is, is in the best state it's ever been and it'll continue to get better. Especially for console. Yeah, console is like so locked down, and it'll continue to be locked down. So hopefully that shines some hope on a subject that comes off as hopeless. Because there are viable solutions to countering cheats that use computer vision, like some of the ones that Nemi mentioned in the interview. To be honest, the word undetectable is thrown around more than the word ratio on Twitter. At this point, it's just used to get you to click. Thank you to Nemi. I actually have an interview with him and his colleague Clint talking about all things anti-cheat. Definitely check it out if it interests you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.